It was that good. We're now joined by Doug Gottlieb, just got off his own show, Fox Sports Radio, joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. And Doug, thank you as always for your time. Uh, you watched Kansas the other day against Oklahoma State, Baylor and Texas Tech, obviously at the top of the Big 12 or right below KU as well. Let's discuss Baylor. Your thoughts about the loss of Jonathan Chamochachua. They have reinvented themselves before. Do you feel like they have a chance to do it again? Yes. Uh, absolutely have a chance to reinvent themselves. I, I mean, I do. I think they're going to win national championship again. I don't. I mean, that's a, just a, one. I mean, it's a great human being. You know, that's like just the human element of it. Like that's a really good kid. Uh, so you're you're bum for him. Um, and you know, so you know, what, what is it that uh, necessity is the mother of all invention, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what Scott's going to be faced with. But it does allow you to play. You know, a little bit smaller, a little bit freer, um, but you know, there's there's going to be some. There's obviously ramifications from. It. I, I don't think I'm, I didn't think it was a national championship team uh, going back to you know even before the SEC challenge when I think some of that stuff got a little exposed. But it's a really good team, and I think there is there there is time to, for some reinvention. And like, look, you know, you got 13 dudes on scholarships. They've recruited really well. Gives more opportunities. So. Um, it, it also shows how so many things went right last year, mm -hmm. and now a couple of things have gone wrong this year. And it, it shows the magic of last season. Well, yeah, Doug, they had no injuries last year. None. Their only injury was COVID. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. It uh, was and that just doesn't happen. That isn't happening. And, and, even and, and, honestly, and honestly, like the COVID not playing Gonzaga thing, I think it helped them. I really did. Um, because it was hard to tell. I mean, everybody I knew was like, man, that team's awesome. They're unbelievable, but but Gonzaga had Gonzaga maybe had a chance. They still probably don't win the game, but to see the speed and quickness and defensive uh, energy and athleticism, I think they would have been better prepared because it's just such a step up in in levels from UCLA. So again, like even that didn't seem like it worked for them. It actually worked for them. Everything worked out last year, whereas this year there have been some some harder times. Doug, what do you think about the matchup uh, in Lubbock tonight between Texas Tech and Baylor Tech? Got them the first time in Waco uh, not that long ago. I know that McCullers a question for them. Uh, JTT, obviously, for the Bears. And, and LJ Cryer is just a forever question uh, every game. But uh, your thoughts on that matchup tonight in the LBK? Well, I, I think one of the things, Texas Tech is really good defensively um, at making you throw that skip pass to the weak side corner. Remember, they're starting... I think they where they start what five four fifth years and um, their their starting lineup's average age is over twenty three years old like they got grown men now they, they will go some drafts so they can't score but I think this is a tough just one of those tough matchups for for Baylor especially considering you know LJ's you know constant swirling status um, as well as the other injuries so yeah I I I don't love Baylor but. The one thing they have built is an unbelievable culture. And these are the games, that these, you know, when you jump up and steal one here, that's how you win a league. And that's still potentially out there for them. Not likely, because Kansas kind of has a role in. They figured themselves out, themselves do another kind of magic act with this team, which I think is good, but not great. But I, I, I like the Tech team, but I especially like them at home. That place has become a zoo. Like I, 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 I can't explain it. It wasn't. It's always been a nice arena, but man, it's and it's. They've always had, even go back to when they played in the old place, kind of some vicious fans. Like, you know, like mechanics drop their wrenches at some of the stuff that's said. Yeah. Uh, but now, now it's packed, packed, and the students are crazy. That's a hard place to win. I'd be surprised if Baylor Baylor took one out. Yeah, I don't. I don't see them winning tonight. If they do, it won't shock me. It won't be like wow because they're they're good. But at the same time, boy, Texas Tech is that atmosphere, of course, with Chris Beard. Um, but really, it's not just that was unbelievable. The one at the Dunkin' Donuts Center last night was an incredible atmosphere with Villanova Providence. But yeah, Texas Tech, that crowd, and they're proud of that, and and they want to remain hunt unbeaten. Uh, at home and Mark Adams your thoughts about what he has done to kind of reinvent who they are not what they do defensively but how he was able to piece together transfers himself and how good they are well he's done a good job and I think one of the things and and Chris Beard tried to do this a little at Texas so 
I, I'll give you kind of a little way back story. My, my brother's at San Diego State. I was just about to tell the story. And, you know, transferring has become very much a fabric of college basketball. And when I, when I was at Oklahoma State, we always had a couple. I was a transfer. Brett Robich was from, you know, transfer from Illinois. I mean, like, you know, Brooks Thompson, may, may God rest his soul, was a transfer from Texas A&M. Like, you name it, we had, we had a lot of Glenn Alexander from Arkansas. We had a lot of transfers. Um, but one of the things that, that Oklahoma State believed in, that Eddie Sutton believed in, was know what you're getting. And they did a great job in recruiting. And sometimes you wouldn't get a guy. And you, then you get him on the, you know, on the, on the rebound. And it's called, you know, it's actually call it rebound recruiting. And, um, and when my brother was at San Diego State, they had a rule. You're not going to, we're not going to take anybody unless one of the coaches is here or at a previous job. And I think when you look at the multiple transfers, it's because they just, you're recruiting out of the portal and you don't know what you're getting. You don't know the kid, you don't know how they fit together the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, so I anyway, Mark Adams. Remember, he's won national championship as a junior college coach. Mm-hmm. He's an unbelievable defensive tactician. But also, they did a very good job of the guys that they took. And I was I was there for that Texas game. They had knowledge of them. They knew what they were getting. And so sometimes that's more important than the kids' overall talent is is what type of person is and does he fit? And you know, like in Lubbock, that's going to take a specific type of fit. Um, so I think they've done a really good job in that sense. And uh, I, you know, I, I think it's a model on some level to be honest, it's still a year removed from Beard. And even though it's a new team, Beard built that culture. They have a great practice facility, like all that stuff is rolling. It's not, it's his program, but not totally his program. And he's such an odd G shucks, nice guy. Kind of, and it's in a different way than Scott is, um, that it's really endearing. But look, at some point when you have one of those tough years, and nothing goes right, do they still have your back? Do you still have that crowd support? Are you still able to get the transfers in, you know, when, when people know they're playing for you and know you don't play super fast? How does that look? I think that's the big challenge. But so far, what Mark has done, and, and he's built an incredible staff. You know, he got Barry Perry to come over, who's the head coach of Colorado State. Again, similar to what you saw with Chris Beard. The, the one issue with sometimes taking these head coaches is they've been head coaches too long. That assistant coach position is a grinder position, not just in recruiting, but also in your relationships with the kids, in your film study, and all that other stuff. Like, you got to make sure you got some hungry coaches. And I do think that Mark's done a good job. Eric, for, for example, like, he was a head coach, but it was at a low major. So he was already doing all the stuff he has to keep doing anyway. Doug, you said Kansas, good, not great. Could this Kansas team be great, or are they just kind of what they are? I think they're. I, I think we're in for a classic Bill Self early round loss. Not because I don't think he's an unbelievable coach. I just don't think they're that talented. You know, I really like those two wings, uh, Abaji and Brown. Um, and uh, McCormick was great the other night. He's played better, and now they're you know they're they're working in some of these freshmen, but they're just okay at the point guard spot. I, I think Remy Martin, if he can get healthy by the end of the year. I think he can give them a little something, but like them winning that this league, as good as this league is, if they win it again, that's that self. And then they'll get, you know, a one or a two seed, and then, you know, the second round, they run into somebody who's got equal talent, and maybe they lose, or maybe the Sweet 16 they do, and people think it's an underachieving year. No, the overachieving is what they've done throughout the entirety of the season, and, you know, water kind of finds its level sometimes in the NCAA tournament. Doug, who's the best team as we start to draw closer to the tournament that nobody's talking about as a contender that might be a sneaky contender? The best team nobody's talking about? Or maybe not talking um, about as much as they're talking about like the Gonzagas or the Auburns of the world. I mean, I, look, I think I think Arkansas and I mean, I think, excuse me, I think Arizona and UCLA are legit in, in very different ways. They split, you know, uh, one of their own home court. UCLA is kind of exactly what you maybe one maybe the freshman's an NBA player too so maybe one and a half NBA players but they really can guard and then their offense is there's nothing really special to it they just run a set to get one of their upperclassmen Johnny Juzang or 
I mean, I guess an ISO and try and get them a bucket. When they make it, they win. When they don't, they lose. But I, re- I still like them. I mean, they're just a really good basketball team. Um, and then Arizona is an explosive offensive team. I don't know if they're tough enough or good enough defensively. And none of those cats are playing the NCAA tournament. But I think either of those teams could, could get to a Final Four and, and, and could win it. I think Kentucky could win it. I know they lost last night. Uh, but I still really like that squad. Um, obviously, Auburn. I think the Big Ten has – I think Illinois is capable. I know they lost in the first round last year, so people are like, well, they were better last year. I, I like this group. Uh, this is a little bit more of a team. And they're not as much dependent upon uh, Io DeSumo. De so um, I, I think Illinois has got a shot. Um, I think Michigan, Michigan State's got a You know, these are like Final Four caliber teams. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the two best teams, by you know, Gonzaga, I think is very, very good. Obviously, you wonder when they step up and level the competition. And that backcourt, um, while super talented, like, let's see what some of those, let's see what Rasir Bolton does when these games really, really matter. Uh, and then Auburn, I like their backcourt, but those kids sometimes forget they got the best talent in the country at power forward or small forward, and they, they shoot the ball so much. But I, I would be surprised if one of those teams wasn't in New Orleans, and it wouldn't shock me if they are both there. Doug, the, uh, the, the Baylor women's program, we spoke with you immediately after Nikki Collin was hired, and we've had you on a couple of times. You've known her for a long, long time, and they had a rough start, and they – lost a couple of tough non-conference games, and on occasion they did that in the past, but you know the standard that was there with Kim Mulkey. But then they had a couple of losses in conference play, and of course that was like, oh my God, but they are rolling now. Now They had a bad yeah. loss on Wednesday a week ago to Oklahoma, but they're playing really well, and I'm sure you're not surprised Nikki's got them turned in the right way. Well, didn't they beat Texas twice? Yep, I mean, two, in three days. Like a week? Yep, yep. Three yeah, days. three days. Yep. And, and, and if you know the respect, not only she has, but people in basketball have for that program. And, and, and look, you know, you got to get into bounce like They're going to throw out a stinker every now and then. Um, I, I think that's why she's wired pretty well for this stuff. That was, that was one of the things. When I talked to some of the people who decided to hire her, um, and I really, I think it was Molly Miller was the other, other choice, um, is that they felt like what she had endured in the volume of games in the WNBA the handling of personalities in the WNBA. Um, and, and you know, frankly, I think the controversies that surrounded her club was in, when she was in there. But knowing she was going to go through it, like, look, Kim has, Kim has her flaws. You guys know them even better than I do. And, you know, Kim has a ton of support because she was she was great at Baylor. There's no – I no one has anything bad to say about the product she put in the basketball floor. It was just, you know – the demands for having her name on the floor and one thing on campus. And it, it became very personal to her. And, and, you know, I, I don't think it was personal to I thought I think it was business. Purpose. But that, that aside, she knew what she was replacing. I'm not sure she knew, um, what it would feel like when they, when you lose a couple of games that normally you didn't lose, but Nikki's cut out for it, man. She, she, she wired a little differently now. Like, 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 keep in mind what she's been through. Like, go through the, the real history of, of Nikki Taggart or Nikki Collin, and you're like, okay, you know, that wasn't just playing a Marquette and then, you know, getting into coaching, but it, it wasn't all roses as they were coaching and when she had to stop coaching and when she started back up and working at FGCU and working away at the food chain. So I'm not surprised by it. But I do know that the, the two Texas wins, she felt like it, they really turned the corner. And look, the, these players were recruited mostly to Kim Mulkey style, which is different than, I mean, Kim is, is one of those old school classic coaches where you run three sets and you're just, we're just, we're going to run them better than anybody else. That works. That's not how Nikki plays. It's a little bit different. So it's taken some evolution from players. It's taken her kind of meeting some in the middle and, it takes, you know, a good win or two, some faith building. But I, I, I yeah, I mean, I, I thought she's a great candidate. I know she's a really good coach, and I do think they've turned the corner. And, you know, you start playing as well as they've played for the most part recently, and you start thinking about the possibilities of playing, you know, all three weekends in March. 
One more thing, Doug, on that. I don't know if you you heard about this, but they beat Iowa State. They beat them badly. Iowa State was coming off. They had a little bit of a COVID issue as well, but they hammered them at home. And uh, the players, it was a relief because it was a, a win they had to have, but also one that was impressive. It kind of sent a little bit of a statement that they were turning the corner. And both the players that were in that room that day, I think it was Jordan Lewis and Queen Egbo. I can't remember exactly who they were. But they both said something about her and how much they – and I know players say that, but you could tell what they were saying about Nikki being real was real. And she had a little bit of a tear, kind of uh, – the, the, the ESPN's doing a documentary, you know, series on Baylor on ESPN+. Yeah. Plus, and you, the woman who uh, – TL said, yeah, I saw a little bit of a tear show up. And so I thought that was pretty cool that they, they had her back as well. Yeah, I, I, I think something really interesting and great is happening there. And um, it, it just it takes the right person. You know, it, it is hard. Like, think about the person who eventually is going to have to replace Scott. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. Right? Like, all those assistants, you know, they're going to call them back up because they're all going to get jobs, right? They don't want, you know, Paul Bills and some of those others already have jobs, right? And they're going to call them like, hey, you know, it's like 20 years from now. Like, you want to come play with this guy? Like, no! <laughs> and, right? No, thank you. Why? Because the dude wins and everybody likes him now. And Scott's got a dark, you know, he'll, he, he those players, they're not disciplined because everything is all, you know, dotting your eyes with heart. But for the most part, Scott's a wonderful human being. Now, look, Kim was a little bit more, I don't want to say rule with an iron fist, but you know, with the type of uh, discipline that she, and the way in which she coached. And and Nikki's different, but Nikki also, again, she there's a respect level that she carries for the players that comes from a professional background that you don't have if you've been in college, right? The, the, the college idea has always been the coach's boss, and then everybody gets along or else. And you know, you find out adversity really exposes, right? It exposes what people are made of. And when there's been some adversity, you find out that Nikki is a real person that she is willing. To meet people out of play. She is willing to listen to play. That doesn't mean she's always going to acquiesce, right? Younger generation players always think that being heard means that you agree with them. That's not how it works, mm -hmm. right? I hear you. We're just going to go a different way. But she's, she's just, she's good like that. And, um, and, and I think, you know, it's the, the, the Cliff Kingsbury, not successful in college, successful for the most part in the pros. Or all of these Urban Myers successful in college and not successful in the pros. And we can go through a list of it, right? It's a different job. It's a different job. And I had so many people call me and like, man, Nikki's going to take over that Baylor job. That's a hard job. And they weren't exactly smoking people when she was in Atlanta the last year. And I was like, you know what? All of that prepared her actually for Baylor, which is a better job than, uh, than the Atlanta job. And I think those those times in which she had to listen, um, she had to she had to hear players out. She had to work and and when you're in that WNBA, like you got to fix problems on the fly. You got a game one day, you got to get on the plane and fly to the plane. You got to fix things. That you can't have necessarily this hard and fast system. And we just didn't play hard enough, ladies. Like that ain't how it works. You got to make some tweaks. I think she's done some right tweaks. Again, I'm not going to promise people that she's going to have the success with him. I'm not sure anybody's going to be able to have it at, at Baylor. I think it'll be helped by the new arena. Um, but I, I do think that you found that you got a really good person and a really good coach. And so far, if you're not impressed, like you're, you're just holding on to your Kim Mulkey poster, poster a little bit too tight. Doug, as always, man, we appreciate your time. I know you've already had a long afternoon with what you do, but j jumping on with us, we appreciate it. Have a great weekend. All right, boys, got a game tonight you can check out on Fox Sports 1, by the way. Air Force, Boise. I know, I know, rating bonanza, but Boise's really no, good. No, no, Boise's pretty good. With Jeremiah Dickey, former Baylor assistant AD, we like him a lot. Yeah, no, they're 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 uh, uh, they're good. They're good. I'd, I'd be interested, by the way, you guys think Jerome Tang gets the, the, the Tulsa job? I, that, to me, would seem like a home run easy hire. Well, that's true some point in time, people need to keep raiding those staff, that staff because everybody leaves is doing a great job. Well, yeah, because Paul Mills had the great run last year. What Grant, Grant. McCaslin's doing, what Driscoll's done. I think, I, think, I, think Grant's big, I think Grant's big time. I think Paul's big. I don't think, you know, all, Tulsa has this thing, and I know that they still have a coach or whatever, I've been frank, but Tulsa has this thing. They, they just, 
outside of Bill Self, they're not. They don't want to hire an ORU guy. But I, I would. Jerome should get a job, and, and Grant's big time. He'll get a Big Twelve job. We, yeah, we, we, when the time is right. We would hate to see Jerome Ling and uh, leave, but we also would be thrilled for him when that time comes, and hopefully it does come sooner rather than later. Doug, thank you, man. Appreciate your time. All right, man. Anytime. Doug Gottlieb, Fox Sports Radio with us, former Oklahoma State basketball player, and he's one of those that is uh, – he reminds me a lot of Tim Brando. And he, doesn't, he doesn't pull any punches. Not everybody likes him, but you know what? He doesn't care. I like him, and we appreciate his knowledge and insight as well. And Jerome Tang in Tulsa, Jerome Tang anywhere would be awesome for Jerome Tang, but also would be great for Scott Drew and his program as well. When we come back, a couple of nuggets.